Hello all my data people, welcome back to another Power BI tutorial video. In this video we are going to be going through Power BI deployment pipelines. So if you need to um, deploy your Power BI reports between different environments or servers or data sources um, for development, for testing, and then for, for, for live production items, that's what these Power BI deployment pipelines are used for um, and how they're utilized. So we're going to be walking through how to set up the um, dynamic updating of those data sources when you elevate or promote your Power BI reporting to different environments. So let's go through the setups and how to get these done. So let's hop back into our Power BI file. So within Power BI, let's open up Power Query here. We are going to be using a parameter within our deployment pipelines to update these data sources. So within our model, what we need to do is we need to set all of our data sources to a parameter. And then when we're deploying in the service, we can set a parameter rule to have those parameters be updated to the different values and environments that we're deploying into during the deployment process. So let's go ahead and look at this advanced editor step on an example here. So we can see that for this file, for this query, we've got a simple SharePoint file being connected to. So we're connecting to a static SharePoint file being this placement.csv file in this dev folder of our SharePoint site. So within our SharePoint site, we can see that we have a dev folder, a test folder, and a prod folder, right? So these are our three quote unquote environments that we want to deploy between during our deployment process within the Power BI deployment pipeline. But if we just publish this report, this is just a static source URL, right? This can't be updated. So what we have to do is we have to change all of these source steps. So all of these source steps within our Power Query steps or Power Query tables to include a parameter so that we can then set parameter rules during the deployment process to update those parameter values when the content's being deployed. So the way that we do that is let's just walk through an example of creating that parameter. So we're gonna go up top to that manage parameter section and we're gonna create a new parameter. Let's go ahead and name this source environment and the type I usually set to text that just allows you to update the values directly in the service as well if it's text. And let's go ahead and have it set to be that connection string so that we're using that dev folder as our connection string for our current value. And then we're just not specifying what specific file we are connecting to, right? So we're just using a general folder connection, folder string to that SharePoint site pointing to the dev folder. And then within the Power Query source step, we'll just include the file name at the end since all of those file names are the same between all the different environments. This example is going to be kind of a bit different than a real world scenario. If you're connecting to databases or different things like that, this is definitely a very basic example, but still kind of th same concept when you're using database. So this source environment that we're using, just that same query string going up to that dev folder. And so let's go back to our placement table here. What we're going to do again, we're in that source step. So we're going to take that entire string that we have in our parameter. So up to that dev slash, we're just going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to put in that source environment parameter instead. And then again, to specify each file, we just need to have that static file name appended to the end of the source environment, right? So we're doing that source environment being this parameter current value. So that full string that was in there before, and then we're specifying its file afterwards. Let's go ahead and push done there. And let's just confirm it loads. Perfect. So it's, you can see that our table still loads up just fine. All of the same data. All we did was now have a parameter as its source that we can then update during our deployment process. And just to confirm a few of these other ones, same setup for all these other tables, right? We're connecting to that source environment as our source URL, and then just depending that specific file that we're using for this specific query at the end of it. So let's go ahead and close and apply. Wonderful. So once we've got all of our data sources connected to their source through a parameter, what we can do is we will then start working in the pipeline. So let's go ahead and publish our report and we are going to publish it into our dev workspace. So we've got this pipeline demo dev workspace, going to go ahead and publish it into there. Let it spin up for a second. Do, 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 do. 
and success. Wonderful. So once we've got our deployment, or once we've got our dev model published, let's hop into here and just take a look at the model settings. So in that, this again, this is where we just published into, into that dev workspace. Let's take a look at our settings here. And so within our parameter section of the model settings, we can see that we are connected to that initial parameter value that we provided it, right? So just that initial SharePoint folder string that we had it set to within the desktop that we just published, it's using that dev folder, right? So what we're gonna be doing is throughout the deployment process of those pipelines, we're gonna be changing that final little item to specify the various folders that we wanna use within the elevated deployment process. So let's hop back into these deployment pipelines here. Let's create a new pipeline. Let's go pipeline demo for a name. And so this is where you'll specify those stages. So we are going to be using dev, we are gonna be using test, and we are gonna be using prod. You can add a bunch, you can add only two. Any types of deployment processes that you guys use, you can add as many as you want in here. And go ahead and create. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be assigning each of these different stages to the workspace, right? So we're going to be using that workspace that we just published into, so that dev pipeline demo workspace. And then let's go ahead and assign that. And then once you assign a workspace, it's no longer selectable from the dropdown. So for test, we're going to choose that test workspace. And for prod, we will choose the prod workspace. All right, great. So we've got all of our workspaces, so our three workspaces have been assigned to their various deployment stages. Now, you can see that we've got the um, status items of if the workspaces are in sync or if they are not. So this little X showing that they're not in sync. And the reason for that is, is because we just deployed, we just published into dev the model and the report that go along with the model. So nothing else exists in test or prod. So let's go ahead and we need to do an initial deploy before we can set any parameter rules in our elevated environments. So let's go ahead and deploy. Within this deployment window, you can set any notes if you want to or have the deployment case move on from a fail or not. So let's go ahead and just with default permissions or default settings, let's go ahead and kick off an initial deploy here. Let this deployment spin for a minute. Now we can see that we are synced up between dev and test and no longer synced up between test and prod. Totally fine. So let's hop into our test workspace here. And so if we do the kind of the same little setup here, we go through to the settings of the test workspaces model. We have yet to set any deployment rules. So we're still just using that dev environment, dev folder in that parameter. Right, so we're using that source environment parameter for all of our sources, but we're still in dev here. So what we need to do is after that initial deployment, we can then set a deployment rule within those elevated environments. So within that test environment, we're gonna go ahead and set a deployment rule. So this little lightning cogwheel icon, we're gonna click on the model that we want to apply a rule to. We are using a parameter rule. Let's go ahead and add a rule. Select the parameter that you're using, and we will specify another value. So again, all we're changing is just this last little part of our parameter to the folder that we're using. So we're starting with dev, and then we're changing it up to test for our test environment. So we're on our test stage in the deployment process, so we're changing that dev value over to test. Let's go ahead and push save there and we can close out of the deployment rules. Now we can see that our dev and test workspaces are no longer synced up. So let's just go ahead and deploy again. And now, once we go check on the model settings within the test environment, we'll, or in the test workspace, we'll see that that um, parameter value has been updated to show the test connection now. So within our parameters of our test, so we're in the test workspace now, we can see that that value has now been updated because of our parameter rule to test environment, right? So if we go ahead, let's enter in these credentials here. We will now see 
and be able to refresh our data in the test environment. So now we've gone from the dev stage over to the test stage and we have successfully changed all of our sources to be connected to that test folder instead of the initially deployed dev folder. And then if we go through it again, we can see that we can do essentially the same thing, just going up one more level into the prod workspace. So again, we're just going to take that test value or that uh, source environment parameter, set a rule to it. You do need to go through that initial deployment though again. So we have that initial deployment. And if we hop into prod here, again, since there's no parameter rules set, we will still be connected to that test environment in our prod workspace. Again, since we didn't have any parameter rules applied on that initial deployment, you always have to make the initial deployment and then you can open up those parameter rules and select the parameter that you want. So let's add that parameter rule again for our prod workspace. Again, just switching up the last item that is needed to be switched up so that we can be connected to that prod folder. And we can close out of that. And let's deploy that model one more time up into prod. And then once you do this, that deployment rule only needs to be set one time. And now that we can see that we are fully in sync between dev all the way up to prod, and we are connected to three different folders, three different source locations within all of that deployment. So let's start out in dev. We go to settings, parameters, we can see that we're in that dev workspace we published with. No parameter rule for the dev workspace. That's our dev environment. We're publishing with the dev one. Let's go over to test now. Check on the settings of our test workspace. We're in the test workspace. Open up the parameters. There you go. We can see that we are now in testing. And then same thing with prod. Open up this model again. And we can see that we are now in the prod folder. So we went through three different environments with just a deployment rule set on our parameter to be updating to that environment that we're deploying into. So super easy, super awesome functionality with the deployment pipelines. And the next benefit to these things are whenever you have live connections. So let's say we've got 10 different reports connected to this single model between our different environments, right? So we've got 10 different reports that are connected to this one model in dev. Whenever you deploy those additional reports connected to that model, all of those connections and sources will automatically switch for those reports. So you don't need to set up any more parameter rules. The only parameter rule you need is just the source parameters to be updated during deployment. And then whenever you deploy multiple reports that are connected to that same model, those reports will get their connection, their live connection setting set to the model that they are being deployed into. So if you deploy a report from the dev that is connected to the pipeline demo model in dev into test, that report will automatically update its connection to be the same model in its environment it's being deployed into. So super helpful, super awesome way to use these Power BI pipelines is to just be able to deploy any type of your reports, any of your models between different environments so you can have those elevated environments deployed super easily. Hopefully that helps during your deployment processes. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Happy to help talk through, help any issues you guys might have. I love these pipelines. They're awesome. Hopefully you guys can find some use out of them and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.